Hello everyone. Let's discuss about the governing equation for laminar flow. We are not going to derive the general form of this equation, but we'll only discuss some special cases, simplified cases. So the flow can be described by considering the forces and their effect on the fluid motion, acceleration, etc. The forces acting on laminar flow are pressure force, gravity force, or body force, then elastic force and viscous force. So the driving forces are pressure force and gravity force. That is, if there is a pressure difference between one point and the other point, flow will take place from the higher pressure to lower pressure point. And the gravity force acts just like it acts in any other body, flow will take place from higher elevation to lower elevation. And viscous flow is there to only resist the flow while pressure and gravity force drives the flow viscous force will resist the flow and in most cases we assume that the flow is incompressible and the elastic forces can be ignored the equation is generally based on the newton's second law that is net force in a given direction is equal to rate of change of momentum or mass into acceleration so let's discuss the forces one by one. So the driving forces are pressure force, which is due to the pressure difference between two points. So how can this pressure difference exist? Let's take two tanks or containers like this. So here we have a liquid up to this level. Here we have a liquid up to this level. Now if we connect them with a pipe like this, then pressure at this point is greater than pressure at this point and naturally the fluid will flow in this direction so that means this pressure difference between this point and this point is causing that flow and that is the pressure force the pressure force so to say is the difference between the pressure force at this point and pressure force at this point so the driving pressure force is the difference between this and this pressure force then body force is the result of relative position with respect to a datum. That is, if you consider a, um, suppose you have dropped some kind of liquid on a plate. If you make the plate inclined like this, then flow will take place in this direction. That's because this point is higher than this point and there is an imbalance of the potential energy and therefore the flow will take place in this direction. So that is the meaning of the body force or gravity force. Elastic forces may arise in case of compressible fluids, which we are not going to study actually, where it resists elastic compression and tries to regain its volume. Suppose if you compress some liquid and it actually gets compressed, then because of its bulk modulus or its elasticity, then it will again try to bounce back to its original volume and that causes the flow. But in most cases that we are going to study, it is not of much uh, significance in case of uh, viscous forces, viscous flow. Then the other force that is the resisting force is the viscous force and the viscous force is governed by the Newton's law of viscosity that is the shear resistance acting between layers is given as mu into du by dy mu is the viscosity coefficient of viscosity and du by dy is the velocity gradient that is if a fluid is moving in this manner that is this layer is moving at a higher velocity than this layer and so on then there will be some shear stress if it is moving at a different uh, pattern, suppose this layer is moving at a much larger velocity than this layer, then the shear stress will increase. And one thing we may always remember is that as long as there is a relative motion, that means if one layer is moving at a different velocity than other layer, there will always be viscous resistance. But if two layers are moving at the same velocity, in between those two layers there will be no viscous resistance because they are just moving together 
and since this viscous resistance or shear resistance will always be there in case of um, relative motion so some energy must be spent to continue the relative motion so that energy comes from the driving forces and as we can see suppose water has come from this tank to this tank where in this tank the water level was or the fluid level was lower and when the fluid has traveled from this high energy tank to this low energy tank the total energy is already decreased because here the total uh, energy level was higher and while traveling through this pipe it has lost that energy and here it is now sitting at a lower energy level so that energy must be spent now the general form of the equation is called the incompressible Navier-Stokes equation we are not going to look at that equation now if you are interested it looks like this but we are only going to discuss a special case of this equation which is laminar flow in circular pipe that is hagen poissoli's law there is another case that is laminar flow between two parallel plates i'll leave that to you for study yourself so we'll discuss laminar flow in pipes so we'll consider a pipe pipe section where flow is taking place in this direction we are assuming that the flow is viscous that is the vis um, effect of viscosity is not ignored here and since the pipe is horizontal we are only considering the pressure force as the driving force we are ignoring the uh, gravity force and we are also ignoring the compressibility or the elastic force and the resisting force is due to the viscous shear stress now what we'll do is we'll consider two sections one and two here and pressure at this point is let's say p1 uh, uh, p and pressure at this point will be something else so that something else is p plus whatever is the rate of change of pressure along x direction multiplied by this length dx dx is the length between sections 1 and 2 then the pressure forces in this case in these cross sections will be this pressure multiplied by the cross sectional area now here we'll consider a smaller cylinder inside the flow which is having a radius r like this and on this cylinder the pressure force acting on this side is fp1 equal to pressure at this point p multiplied by its cross-sectional area pi r squared and on the other side at section 2 the pressure force is this pressure p plus del p by del x dx then that multiplied by the cross-sectional area pi r square now this cylinder we are just separating one part of the flow cylindrical part of the flow from the other part so this will try to move at a different velocity than the surrounding layer so that will be resisted by the shear stress the shear stress is tau and the area over which this shear stress is acting is the surface or the curved area of the cylinder which is 2 pi r into the length dx so this viscous force or the shear force will be acting like this so now the pressure force fp will be pressure force at this section minus pressure forces this section so therefore we can write it as 
minus del P by del X dx into pi r square. The viscous force is the shear stress tau multiplied by the area of the cylinder twice pi r into dx. For steady flow, we know that the acceleration will be zero and therefore the net force is also zero. Which means we can write that the pressure force plus viscous, uh, the viscous force will be also zero. The pressure force is given as minus del P by del X dx into pi r square. And the viscous force, because it is uh, acting in the opposite direction, so it is minus tau into 2 pi r dx. So that equals 0. From that, we can write that tau is equal to minus del P by del x r by 2. Now, from this equation, we can also replace tau because we know from Newton's law of viscosity that tau is mu into du by dy or since the here dy is the direction perpendicular to the flow direction and in case of pipe the direction will be the radial direction so we can replace y with r and we can write that tau equal to du by dr multiplied by the coefficient of viscosity. And therefore, we can write it in this form. But this is a differential equation form and it is difficult to um, may, uh, use in any physical applications so we need to integrate it but in this form there are just too many differential terms du by dr and del phi by del x so to integrate it we are going to select only these two variables and these two will just keep it as it is this you can understand as del phi by del x which is the pressure difference per unit length along the flow direction which is also called the pressure gradient. Now if we integrate it then we will get this form of the equation where u is equal to 1 by 4 mu del v by del x r square. You see this del v by del x is just kept as it is and this constant of integration will be encountered and this can be obtained by using some kind of boundary conditions and the boundary condition that we have here is that we are going to use the no slip condition that is at the pipe boundary the velocity will be zero this u is the velocity at any distance at, at any radius r in the pipe so at the boundary, at the pipe boundary, this small r is equal to radius of the pipe capital R and at that point u equal to 0. So we can write 0 equals this much and c equal to minus this much. And therefore u equal to, we are simply replacing this value of c and finally we can write that u equal to these two terms multiplied by r square minus small r square. As you can see, there is a square term here. That means the variation of velocity is, in case of laminar flow in a pipe, is parabolic. That means, if you consider a pipe here like this, at this point, the velocity will be zero, it's going to be highest at this point and the velocity variation will be a parabola like this. You see how that's true.
So when r equals 0, since the velocity at any given r is given by this quantity, so if we make this term 0, then we will have the maximum velocity. And so for maximum velocity, it will be given by this quantity. And by replacing all the uh, these different terms, we can finally arrive at a relation such as u equal to u max multiplied by 1 minus r square, small r square divided by capital R square. That means we have expressed the velocity at any given radius in terms of the maximum velocity at the center. So u equal to u max when r equal to 0, that is at the center of this pipe and therefore the variation of velocity is parabolic. Based on this equation we can also calculate the discharge inside the pipe. So for that let us consider a certain cross section of the pipe like this where capital R is the, the uh, radius of the pipe and small r is any arbitrary radius and at radius small r we are considering an elementary strip of thickness dr. So through this elementary strip the discharge or flow rate will be the velocity at this radius multiplied by the area of this strip. So area of this strip will be 2 pi r into dr this is the thickness. So this discharge dq is given by this and therefore the total discharge we can find by integration and it is found as q equal to pi by 2 r square into u max. Now if we want to define an average velocity for the pipe, so that we can define as total discharge divided by cross-sectional area. Although we know that the velocity is not the same at different points, but for practical purposes sometimes we need an average velocity and therefore we are going to define it like this. Now in that case this average velocity u bar is q by a, but q we have already found out as pi by 2 r square u max and the area of cross section will be pi r square which gives us this relation that because pi r square and pi r square gets cancelled we can find that the average velocity is half of the maximum velocity. Now this maximum velocity we can write this expression which we have already derived and we can replace it for the average velocity as u bar equal to 1 by 8 mu del p by del x r square from which now you see at one stage we left this del p by del x alone because we couldn't integrate it there were too many terms to integrate now we have eliminated the other terms, other differential terms and we are only left with these two terms, differential terms. So now we can make it integrable and we are arranging it like this del p is equal to 8 mu u bar divided by r square del x. So if we integrate this which means that del p is the pressure difference between two sections which are the lx difference distance apart or dx distance apart. So pressure at this point is p, pressure at this point is p plus del p by del x into dx and if we want to find out the pressure difference between two distinct sections which are not very closely spaced but at a measurable distance suppose l in that case we can integrate it between these two limits where x value at this point will be x1 and x value at this point will be x2 and 
x2 minus x1 will be equal to L. So we are going to integrate this equation and we are going to get P1 minus P2 equal to this much 8 mu u bar r divided by r square multiplied by x2 minus x1 and which is which can be written as p1 minus p2 equal to 32 mu u bar divided by d square into l and this form of the equation is called the hagen poissolis equation so this is a very famous equation in case of laminar flow in pipes this is most widely used equation but let's try to understand the different terms of this equation we can look at it at, from different angles so this is the equation and from the equation we can write that u bar that is diverge velocity is proportional to p1 minus p2 or the pressure difference between the two sections which means if the pressure difference is more velocity will increase similarly it is also proportional to inversely proportional to the length between the two sections that means if we are taking a longer pipe then the velocity will be smaller it is proportional to d square which means that if the pipe diameter is large then the velocity will be larger because it will be easy to flow also if it is uh, it is inversely proportional to the coefficient of viscosity and therefore for viscous fluids the velocity will be less for less viscous fluids the velocity will be more the first two terms first two interpretations can be combined together to write in this way where u bar is proportional to p1 minus p2 by l so this p1 minus p2 by l we can call it the pressure gradient that is if the pressure at this point is suppose this much and pressure at this point is this much then in between we assume that the pressure is varying linearly and therefore the pressure gradient means the difference between these two pressures divided by the length and as we know the gradient can also be called slope so actually in this figure you can see it is the slope of this line it can also be looked at from another angle here we have discussed the proportionality of the velocity but now let's discuss the proportionality of the p1 minus p2 term that is the pressure difference we can say that p1 minus p2 is proportional to u bar that is as velocity increases the pressure difference also increases now what does that mean we have already discussed it in the previous slide where we said that as pressure difference increases the velocity increases but what's the point of thinking about this whole thing in the opposite way that is as velocity increases pressure difference also increases the pressure difference in a way represents the energy spent or the energy lost in the flow that means if the velocity increases that means the flow is losing more of its energy it may be in form of pressure energy in some cases it may be body force or potential energy and so on so if the flow moves faster then the fluid has to spend more of its energy and if we take these two sections suppose if the velocity is larger then the difference between this p1 and p2 will be larger that means because it is flowing very fast it is spending a lot of energy the pressure energy to overcome the friction or the viscosity similarly 
it is inversely proportional to the area if you allow a larger cross-sectional area which is proportional to d square then the pressure difference the energy lost or energy spent will be smaller because it can move easily and for uh, over a larger length because it is also proportional to length over a larger length more energy will be spent and finally in case of uh, a fluid having a higher viscosity more energy will be spent and in case of a large uh, a fluid having lower viscosity a thin fluid less energy will be, have to be spent so this is the meaning of this kind of uh, proportionality of these two terms with respect to the other terms.